Hello and welcome to the News Cube. I'm J. Douglas Barker. When Paul Wolfowitz briefed the United States Congress prior to the invasion of Iraq, he expressed absolute confidence that the war would go quickly and well. Now, Dr. Wolfowitz is a well-educated man with extensive political and academic experience and was therefore able to present some powerful arguments. How could he have been so totally wrong? Well, by focusing too much on his perception of the future and ignoring the reality of the past. Here's a few basic facts that were not considered. Now, a leader always leaves an indelible print on the people he governs. If morality is not of personal importance to a leader, corruption will be the norm in his realm, even if he tries to stamp it out. If atrocity is an operational tool for a leader, atrocity will happen with a frequency that the leader himself cannot control. For a very long time, the once noble country of Iraq has been infected with an insidious evil that is incomprehensible in the West. Instead of working to defuse long-standing conflicts, a series of corrupt regimes have repressed interactions between the quarreling parties with a brutality that's beyond description. Pressure has been building up for centuries, and when the Americans blew the top off the bottle with the invasion, all of the corruption, immorality, an atrocity that had been driven into the populace came out with an uncontrollable force. Disagreements within the population that were already complex have been made all the more so by the length of time the injustices have been allowed to stand and the violence that has occurred because of them. What we have now is chaos. This has happened before. No one should be surprised that it's happening now. Chaos should never be a surprise, and we in the West have ripped open yet another passage for it. Many of us are a little surprised that the person who helped set this disaster in motion is now head of the World Bank. I mean, that's beside the point. We have chaos. And even though it's on the other side of the world, it affects us in the West in ways you may not expect. We'll get into that next. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Blair backs protest urging UN force in Darfur, 38 House members support presidential impeachment, and feds crack down on the Liberty Dollar. Hi, I'm Mark Hopkins and you're watching Potted Meat. Tony Blair took an unusual step last week of endorsing a mass protest on foreign policy, which will include an interface service at the gates of Downing Street. The Global Day for Darfur, which is expected to include demonstrations and vigils in 32 countries next week, is designed to press the government of the Sudan to accept a UN peacekeeping force in its troubled western region. 1.9 million people have been displaced in the Sudan as a result of renewed violence there. A House bill sponsored by U.S. Representative John Conyers, a Democrat from Michigan, would create a select committee to look into grounds for impeaching President Bush. Grounds for impeachment, according to the House members, include misleading the public on the need to go to war, retaliating against public officials who disagree with him, and encouraging torture. In a stunning development in the private currency movement, the U.S. Mint last week announced that the Justice Department has declared that the National Organization for the Repeal of the Federal Reserve Act, or NORFED, and anyone who uses their liberty dollars in commercial transaction is in violation of federal law. NORFED claims that the dollars are backed by gold in the reserves and should be considered legal tender. That's the highlights and the lowlights for this week. For more news, information, and entertainment, head on over to pottedmeat.com. I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat.
in the West may be geographically isolated from the problems in Iraq, but the chaos will be affecting us for a long time to come. For one thing, chaos weakens the center and strengthens the extremes. Even here in the politics of the West, voices of sincere moderation are being lost to the noise of the extremes. In the turbulence of cut and run versus lie and die, who can possibly chart a course of reasoned wisdom? Aside from the political degradation, we in the West are also faced with a staggering economic consequence of the Middle Eastern chaos. If, for example, it becomes known in Iraq or Afghanistan that a new school or hospital was built with American money, someone with an extreme agenda will destroy it, even though that destruction would damage his country's future. This certainty of condemnation means that the money for reconstruction, which we in the West are obliged to supply, has been spent with no direct accountability. We simply cannot allow a direct link to be made between the Western dollars and any specific project in the region. That lack of accountability, coupled with the high construction costs, inherent in working in a politically unstable environment, makes the entire reconstruction effort a prime target for mismanagement and corruption. We can't stop the reconstruction, but we can't hope to pay for it either. Our great-grandchildren will be paying for this, all because the political extremes are vastly more powerful than anything in the moderate middle. And the phenomenon is spreading. We see it in our own politics more and more every day. What can we do about it? More on that later. For now, we encourage you to listen carefully for the voices in the middle. Pull away from the noise and the wacko conspiracy theories. Support any way you can the concepts of reason and moderation. It may not be seen like much, but it's a start. From the News Cube, I'm Jay Douglas Barker.